How did you do that? That seems like it would take you a long time. What'd you do? Oh, let's see. 1 plus 200 is 201. And 2 plus 199 is 201. And how many sets of those are you going to have? So 201 times 100. And uh, if you remember that good old math trick, 20,100 right there. Boom. Done. So here's something that you learn. If you take the first and the last and add them together, right, and then multiply by half the number of terms, because that's the number of pairs, right? And you get this. Right, and, and write this down somewhere. Write this down somewhere. So in other words, you get uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Uh, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. Somewhere you can reference it because you're, you're going you're gonna to use this in order to get to our big idea today. So the sum from i equals 1 to n of i is equal to that thing. So, so what we said is if you add up the numbers 1 plus 2 plus dot, 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 plus 199 plus 200, if you add all those up, it, you, you just use that formula. That's, that's all Leon did. Because think about it. What was n in this situation? How many, how many numbers did we add up? We did 200 numbers, and 200 divided by 2 is 100, because you had 100 pairs, right? And then if you plugged in 200 for n, you saw that, that the pairs always added up to 201. You see that? So that formula will always work, 100% of the time. And last year, we proved that. Remember when we did mathematical induction last year? You know, we said, uh, show true for the first uh, few terms, so like case one. And we did case two. We did case three. And you're like, oh, okay, I get it. And we said, assume true for, for case n is equal to k. And then show true for n is equal to k plus one. We had an inductive hypothesis. It's the last thing you did last year before you walked out the door. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, and that's okay. And, and you don't have to be able to do mathematical induction. Again, the first time I taught calculus in the school, the kids had never done the mathematical induction piece. So we, we said pause and we took three days and we, we learned about math induction. I said, okay, now that you know that, let's get back to this piece. Do you know enough to trust me that this equation is true? Okay. So then uh, the second one I want to show you is is this because this is going to be important as well uh if you had say uh one plus four plus nine plus 16 what are all these these are those are perfect squares right if you add up the perfect squares here's what it adds up to it adds up to and you're going to want to write this one down somewhere the sum from i is equal to one to n of i squared so the perfect squares they add up to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And if you're asking why, my response to you is we proved it last year. Like we used mathematical induction to show that that equation is true. There's no question. I'm going to show you two more. These are formulas you're going to need to reference. You need to be able to see them as we do our work later on today. The sum from I, I equals 1 to n of i cubed. So if you have if you have perfect cubes, like give me some perfect cubes. 27, 8, 64, good. So if you add those up, you get n squared times n plus 1 squared all over 4. Now, uh, suppose suppose we so we did like you know just one two three four we did we did the perfect squares so like one four nine sixteen right we did perfect cubes what if I just had this what if I have five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus five 
What do you do in that situation if you want to add those up? Oh, you do. You go 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 5 is 15. Well, I don't do it that way. How do you do it? Come on. You, you do 5 times 6, right? You do, you do 5 times 6, right? So if I said 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus dot, 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 dot plus 5, you would say, well, I know how to do that. I just take five times, and please tell me how many terms do I have, right? So if it's 1, 2, 3, if this is the uh, 18th term, it would be 5 times 18, which is 90. Agreed? So suppose that we have the same number every time. We just take that number and multiply it by the number of terms. Agreed? So that's our last formula we'll write down. Just people have trouble making sense of that one. And so we're going to write this down. The sum from i equals 1 to n of a constant, of a constant. So a constant would be like the number 2 or 3 or pi or 18 or negative 12 over 5. Any number. The sum of a constant is the constant times n, however many terms you've added up. Do you have those four formulas in some safe place for yourself? Because you need them. Awesome. So then, let us go to our piece that we were at yesterday, because you are ready to do the impossible, which is add up the area of an infinite number of rectangles. We left off yesterday with this. Yep, Mike is on. Thank you. Sum from i equals 1 to n of. And and didn't we have this? Is this what you have? You have you have the limit as n goes to infinity. Where are we? The, the exact same spot that we left off yesterday. Okay. So you have the limit as n goes to infinity. And, and what did we have out here? We had 8 over n cubed. And then what we had here was I squared, right? So that's where we left off. Today, what we want to do is we just want to finish this. We need to substitute something for that. We need to substitute a known sum. This is saying the sum of the perfect squares. Well, fortunately, you have a formula for that. So this becomes right here the limit as n goes to infinity of 8 over n cubed times what is the sum from i equals to 1 to n of i squared. n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Where did you find that, Colin? Yep. What I just gave to you. That's a sum that we know. And now it's easy. We just find the infinite limit, which you already know how to do. We've done this before. You tested on it. You all got A's on it. Well, maybe not A's, but A minus. A minus, maybe. Yeah, we all got a score. So we have the limit. Let's find the limit. As n goes to infinity of, I'm going to multiply the top out. 2n times n times n, times 8, 16n cubed. I'll foil this part. I got 1 times 2n and 1 times n. What's that going to give me? 3n times n, 3n squared times 8, 24n squared. Okay, now let's do the n. I got 1 times 1 is 1 times n times 8. So if you multiply out the top, that's what you get. How about the bottom? What do you get in the bottom? 6n cubed. How do I determine an infinite limit? What do I do? Take out the n cubed. Limit as n goes to infinity of... I take the n cubed out of the top. What are you left with? Plus 
24 over M plus. All over 6N cubed. What happens? The N cubes are gone. What else happens? Why does 24 over N and 8 over N squared, why do those go away? Yeah, because you're plugging a large number for N, so the denominator gets ridiculously large. If the denominator is ridiculously large, that makes it go to zero. So what are you left with? What is 16 over 6? Which is 2.6 repeating? Yeah? Take out your calculator. I go to y equals. And I type in my function, which was x squared. Zoom 6. I want to calculate the area from what to what. What was our bounds? 0 to 2. I go second calculate. Which one do I grab? Number 7. And I go 0 to 2. Yes, just to be clear, folks, your calculator, it's coming up with an approximation. It's a very accurate approximation. Your answer is exact. I can type it in? Yeah. Oh, what? Morgan, ask a specific question. Um, I don't know how to work this program. Y equals, second calculate, number seven. What's your lower number? So the Z rhymes with the Eero. I know what the numbers are, but I don't know how to. Oh. How do I get the. the yeah, how do I get the thing with jiggers on the bottom? The thing with jiggers on the bottom. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> what? I can calculate? Yeah. What do I, and what do I do? Okay, let me pause this. I'm. <laughs> All right, we're going to try one more example, then you're going to work. Here we go. You guys got it. You guys are going to drive the problem. I've got x cubed from 0 to 3. x cubed from 0 to 3. What is the length of the entire interval? 3. If I divide it up into n rectangles, what's going to be the width of each rectangle? 3 over n. So that is what we call our delta x. Remember, we said that delta x is equal to b minus a over n. And we said x sub i is equal to the starting point plus delta x times i. That we're going to use every single time. So, for what, e for what x values do we evaluate the sum? What are our x sub i values? Good. Zero plus, where do we get zero from? That's your start, plus 3 over n. Where'd you get that from? That's your delta x times i. So in other words, you get 3i over n. This is what we wrote down yesterday, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. That represents the area bounded underneath the curve. We've been working on that all semester so far. It's been like four days. All, we've, we've been working all semester on that and and we've been using like two rectangles, eight rectangles, right? So, so we want to get past this whole estimation point. So we're going to do more rectangles. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals n, I'm sorry, from i is equal 1 to n of 
f of x sub i delta x. Pause. Quick turn to partner. Tell them what does delta x represent. Go. Somebody, what does delta x represent? With the rectangles. Good. Turn to your partner. What does that represent? See if you figure that out. Go. All right, what do you got? Uh, x sub i is the x values. You're plugging it. What happens when you plug them into the function? That gives you your heights. These are the heights. What does that represent? Tell me right now. What does that thing mean? Sum. Sum of the heights. Remember our whole formula was take the width times the sum of the heights. You get it? And this says we're going to do how many rectangles? Infinite. Infinite. That's what this means. That's the language. That's the beauty of the mathematics is it pours out to you. Let's actually put that in context of what we have here. We have the integral from what? 0 to 3 of? So the bigger number goes on top. The bigger number goes on top. What's our function? x cubed dx. So that's our definite integral. That's the calculus expression that we are going to use throughout the rest of the year. We don't know how to find that exactly right now using calculus. So we're going to do something really cool. We're going to add up the area of an infinite number of rectangles. So here we go. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of what do I do now? What it, it, it tells you right here, I grab my x sub i, and what do I do with it? I plug it into the function. So I take the x sub i, and I plug it in for x right there. See that? So we have 3i over n, that thing cubed. That's what that is. Times delta x. What's delta x? 3 over n. This is a three-day lesson, folks. You're supposed to be a little bit confused right now, but slowly working through it. So, I'm going to figure out that piece. Because we are really smart, and we know what we're doing. Let's go. Limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of, let's multiply that out. What, what's, uh, what's 3 cubed? Times 3? 81? Everybody agree we're getting 81 i cubed? What do you have in the bottom? End of the fourth. <laughs> Folks, we're we're taking the we're taking the n or what are we doing? We are cubing it. So n cubed times n is end of the fourth. Order of operations says we, yep, yep. Okay, folks, if you, at, at this point, it should always be the case that I is one degree less than the N. You see that? If that's not the case, then it's not correct. You're going to make a mistake. It should always be that this degree is one less than that. Okay, so everybody okay here? The next step is to factor stuff out so you only have the I left. So what's going to be pulled out? What What's not I in this situation? 81 over n to the 4. So I got the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n. Whoop. Put the 81 over 4. Yeah, I guess. Moron. 
like I've never done this before. 81 over n to the fourth. Sum from i equals 1 to n of, and what goes on this side? i cubed. Okay, so all this is, I mean, it looks like some crazy mathematics. Like, you show your parents, they're going to be convinced you're going to Harvard. Because they're like, you must be the smartest person in the world. Right? Like, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. I'm just adding up the area of an infinite number of rectangles. Um, this, this infinite limit, no big deal, right? As long as we get rid of this and we put something in place of it. What goes in place of this? What what do you have that goes in place of that? Yeah, the thingies that you did right at the beginning of class. The limit as n goes to infinity of 81 over n to the fourth times. What's the thing that goes in place of that? n squared. No. We'll get to that. It just, it just, uh, it's a multiplier. We could just factor it out. Yep, just like you could take 8x and write it as 8 times x. That's all we did. We just totally allowed to do that. Okay, um, I can do this. I substituted my known sum. All I did was just put that in its place. I know what I'm doing now. I've got the limit as n goes to infinity of 81 over n to the fourth times... Let's see here. What is n plus 1 squared? n squared plus 2n plus 1, right? And then we'll multiply by n squared. So we get n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus n squared all over 4. Yeah? So it looks like in the top, we've got here the limit as n goes to infinity of 81 n to the fourth plus 162 n cubed plus 81 n squared. And that all sits over 4 n to the fourth. How do we take care of an infinite limit again? Yeah, divide out the largest uh, term, which is n to the fourth. What are you left with? 81 plus 162 over n. 81 over n squared. Ooh, that's beautiful, because now I know I'm getting really close, aren't I? So what do I do? And the fourths are gone. Gone. I'm going to check it on my calculator, because I'm kind of that kind of person. I've got x squared, so I'll go x to the third, and I'm going to calculate. What do I do, Morgan? What do I do, Morgan? Uh, seven. seven. And then what? I just type the numbers in. Yeah. What do I type in for the numbers? Zero, Zero and three. three. Wow. Boom! Take out your assignment. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Boys and girls, right now, I want you to work on problems one and two. How can you check your answer? Calculator. Calculator. You technically are capable of doing problems three and four. However, you might struggle until you see tomorrow's lesson. But for sure, one and two, you are ready to go. Get it. Knock it out. You're going to do amazing. And by the way, you need to be able to do this on the test. And you need to be able to do it within a reasonable amount of time. You can't take 45 minutes on one problem. So you need to get good at this, folks. And if you're anything like my previous classes, you're going to get good at it. And, and believe it or not, these are not the problems that you get wrong on the test. They are not. You, you get the easier stuff wrong that involves, like, negative exponents and algebra and stuff like that. So go.